Welcome to Coffee, Eggs and Inspiration. It's a weekly show that goes out over YouTube and as a podcast over all of the major platforms. And each week I get to sit with an inspiring person and listen to them tell their story and share it with all of you. This week is no different. I'm still with a very inspiring person, incredibly inspiring person, Oma Tola. <laughs> Welcome. Hi. <laughs> Uh, but it's also quite different in some ways. We're actually sitting here in the George Hotel in Lagos, Nigeria. Lagos, Nigeria. Coming to you from Nigeria. <laughs> my first time here. <laughs> and how has it been? Uh, it's been amazing. It's been amazing. Sometimes I find it a little bit warm outside and mm -hmm. sometimes I find it a little cold inside. Oh dear. Uh, but the people <laughs> are always very warm and, uh, mm -hmm. and incredible energy. So I'm going to give uh, Omatola a little bit of an introduction here. For uh, most uh, of you watching from Nigeria or anywhere in Africa, you, you probably won't need this in introduction. Uh, an incredible uh, uh, career and uh, A-list celebrity sitting next to me on my left here. <laughs> so Omatola is uh, first and form foremost a, uh, an actress, singer, model and philanthropist, also a family woman mm -hmm. uh, with four children. Uh, originally set out to join the industry of real estate or perhaps become a pilot and started uh, modeling uh, instead so got drawn into uh, into the industry I guess through that route mm -hmm. uh, was introduced to acting when accompanying a friend uh, to an audition and actually got the role I did <laughs> but uh, your mum wouldn't let you do it right no she wouldn't uh, we're gonna come back to that that's uh, and you you're still in touch with a friend oh, no no no, I'm not. <laughs> okay, so, um, but the first uh, real role came after that, uh, and in fact it was the lead role in a uh, movie Venom of Justice in 1995, mm. which set off an absolute meteoric career, and <laughs> the blockbusters since then are too numerous to list, frankly. You've done over 300 movies. Yeah. 300 movies. So I can't mention all of them, unfortunately. I'll mention a few of them here. Mortal Inheritance, 1995, uh, which was a, a movie about a, a, sickle, a sickle cell sufferer uh, who actually recovered. Mm -hmm. uh, and Omatola won two awards for that. The best uh, actress in an English-speaking film mm -hmm. and also the overall best actress. Mm -hmm. And I believe you were the youngest person ever to receive that award. At the time. At the time. <laughs> I want to believe Fantastic. <laughs> Others, Games Women Play, Blood Sisters, All My Life, Last Wedding, My Story, uh, an, an incredible list. So well and truly an A-lister in every sense of the word by the year 2000, if not earlier, with over 40 awards in the industry, 300 plus movies, as I said, and in 2005, uh, became a uh, launched her musical career, so became a, a uh, musician Yeah. Uh, with her uh, A&R guy, Ugo. Ugo's actually in the room. Ugo's oh, here. Yeah. Shout out to Ugo. Hello. You have to, you have you to have come, to come in. in. Say, say hello. There he is. How you doing? <laughs> um, and then uh, the movie career, of course, of course continued. Last mm -hmm. Flights to Abuja was a really big blockbuster hit in 2012. And in fact, in West Africa, outperformed movies that year, including Spider-Man, Ice Age, The Avengers, Madagascar, uh, just to give you a, an idea of scale. 2012, uh, you launched your reality show, yeah. Omatola, The Real Me. Right. <laughs> Fantastic. Unscripted, I guess. And actually, mm -hmm. it was bigger at the time, uh, higher views in Africa than Big Brother, in all of Africa. Uh, so, obviously, a lot of people interested in your story. <laughs> uh, then in uh, 2017, Alter Ego. Yes, that was. Big movie. Right. Uh, and the producer of that was Moses. Moses has just stepped out, but he's actually with us at the moment. Yeah. Uh, and you won an award for that as well, Best Actress. Yeah, in um, MVC. That's Moses. <laughs> There's Moses outside. Moses is outside our, our little room here, um, yeah, that, talking on the phone. So, yeah, for, that was for the African um, movie Viewer's Choice Award. Viewer's Choice, well that's a really important, that must be a very good award uh, to get. It is, it right? is. It's one of the biggest in Africa. So. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And in 2018, uh, Omatoli, you were invited to become a judge for the Oscars, as in the... Oh, the a voted member. A voting, a voted yeah. member. Thank you. And uh, we're, we're getting, this is great service, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, I understand that involves watching lots of movies and that's something that's on your plate at the moment. Yeah. 
<laughs> Philanthropy, um, boy, the list there is long as well. You've worked with the UN World Food Program, uh, with uh, Save the Children UK, One.org, yeah. uh, Omatala Youth Empowerment Program, yeah. Amnesty International, the list goes on and on and on. So really giving back uh, to the community. And of course, one of the reasons I'm here <laughs> is that uh, the inaugural creativity, the business of creativity mm -hmm. festival, Tefest, Tefest. is on this week. It is next tomorrow. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look, this is such a, an illustrious career covering so many things, it's going right. to be difficult to, to focus and pinpoint on, on one thing. Yeah. So why don't we start at the beginning mm -hmm. and just tell me how you got into it. You were modelling at the time, you were invited to an audition and? So I, <clears throat> hi again. <laughs> so I lost my father when I was just 12, right? And um, so coming out from my secondary school, you know, secondary school there, you guys call it college, you know, I immediately wanted to work and help my mom. Um, so there was this model around my area at the time. His name was Onaivi. He was, he was a supermodel. That's what we thought he was. Um, we used to call him Mr. Big. And so he came to my mom, he came to my mom and said, look, she can model, you know. My mom was very, very protective of me. Yeah. I was the first daughter and uh, my two other younger brothers were very little, so, you know, and you know, Africa, you know, you're a pretty girl. Uh, rumor goes around that, you know, you're probably gonna get loose and stuff like that. So she was pretty worried, you know. And so, I mean, she let me go model because this was a family friend she could trust, right? And so I, I go into modeling and I'm, I'm going for an audition one of those days and some girl that I was friends with told me, oh my God, do you know next door <laughs> there's an audition going on for a movie? And that day? Like, yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and I was like, she's like, well, do you want to accompany me there? I was like, sure. And so we went. And she went in and she didn't get the part. She came out, she was like, you know, all gloomy. She didn't get the part. I was like, oh, sorry. You know. She's like, do you want to go try? I'm like, I mean, I don't have any money to pay them. She's like, no, it's free. I was like, oh, wow, well, okay. <laughs> of course. And so I went and I, I, I got the part. <laughs> Amazing. And that was it. That was, I mean, so I, I didn't do that movie. Because I went home and told my mom, of course, that I got a part in the movie. And she was upset. Because she was, thought you were doing the modeling then. Yeah, right? but then, then again, back in those days, um, being, a, being an act, actor was a very bad thing. Why? It wasn't developed and people thought if you were an actor in Africa, to be precise in Nigeria, you had to be a loose person. Right. Yeah. So either you were a prostitute or, you know, or I don't know. I mean, that was just the image, you know. So right. no one wanted to identify with that. Your parents didn't want... Moses said something. What did he say? Especially when you end up making a film called The Prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> Silly. Moses, Moses, is, uh, Moses is the uh, director of um, Alter Ego. Ego. He's just come back home. Yeah. Come and say hello. Come and say hello. But yeah, 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 you can't. You can't try it. Yeah. It's, it's oh, not very really wide. You know, there's space over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's space yeah. over there. Oh, come down and say hello. Like to be balanced. <laughs> <laughs> And that's, that's good Moses. balance. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is super balanced now. Yeah. Moses, you Hi. have to stay there. How are you? I don't look good on camera. Oh, dear Lord. Okay, bye. <laughs> He's bye. He's <laughs> <all big. laughs> You know, so yeah, so um, so back in the day, that was the reputation, and it was it was a very bad one, you know. Yeah. No one wants to hear that you're in the arts, how much more you're an right. actor, you know. So yeah, so she was like, oh, you want to disgrace the family, da 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 da, you're supposed to go into university, you only told me you wanted to go model, and now you want to act, what's wrong with you? Make up your mind. Yeah, no, no, there's, there's no making up of any mind. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't even an option, uh -huh. <laughs> you know. But anyway, um, the, the director for that movie thought I was so good at what um, he saw. I came and told him, look, I can't do it, my mom's not going to let me. And he said, you know what, I have another project that I want you to do. I'm not, I, I don't even need to audition you. I know you're best for that project. Wow. But I'm going to come see your mom. And that was Phenom of Justice? That no, was Phenom of Justice. Okay. The uh, director's name was Reginald Deberry. Okay. And so they came to see my mom and um, talked to her. Were you and, in the room? No. <laughs> really? I wasn't. No. So I mean, how did that conversation go? I don't know. Like, I, I wanted to believe it was like, oh, you know, your daughter is very good. This is a good career path for her. But I know my mom said, you know, you have to promise me that, you know, I, she's not going to be around boys. <laughs> you know, and stuff like that. You know, I'm a widow. I don't want, you know, a bad name for, for the family and stuff like that. And I assured her. So making sure it was a wholesome... I think I was young. You have to understand I was 16. Yeah. I was yeah. 16. So, I mean... That's very... Years with the industry, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Amazing. Yeah, so. Well, thank you, Mom. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Mom. She's late now. She's she's late. I'm yeah, sorry. I'm an orphan. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you, though. Well, yeah. uh, what 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 a start, and then um, and then it started rolling from there, and you got uh, got into more and more movies. Exactly. So that was what happened. So from the first movie, Venom of Justice, um, in the industry, naturally, everyone got to know that you were doing this, and then the, the rumor went round. Oh, this is new girl. This is new girl. And so another director guessed it. And I said, Oh, you know, what? I'm gonna post that. Uh, um, audition, uh, sorry, put you in my movie, yeah. come for an audition and yeah. stuff like that. So that's how I just, you know, picked it up from nowhere. Did you have any training in, uh, in acting or was it all no. just really on set? Yeah, no, I didn't have any training. And how did you find learning words, you know, learning the script for the first time? Was that a difficult thing or did you get used to that quickly? <laughs> I did, I got used to it very quickly. I was young. I mean, now it's a little bit more difficult. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But then, you know, your mind is open. You're, you know, you're, you're just, taking it, all just taking it all in. I learned very fast, you know, I was just... And how did you get into the characters? Because these are all very different movies with very different characters. Exactly. I'm not a very technique? deep person, so I'm very, I'm very deep. And I think that's one of the things that a lot of directors said. I have my director here, so he can also attest or not to that. <laughs> is, this, is this correct, Moses? Yes. Okay. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I mean... So it's, it's almost very easy for me to get into characters and, and all, because I can easily understand it. <laughs> really I sort of study and, yeah. and, and get into the story. Right. How did it feel to get that first uh, award in pretty early in your career, right? It was 1997, you'd mm -hmm. started in 1995 and you were voted Best Actress. Yeah, I had just turned 18 and I had just gotten married. And I was pregnant <laughs> when I walked off the stage to go pick up my word. I remember a lot of men were looking What a great example, though. <laughs> I don't know. If, yeah, of course, yeah. I got married when I was 18, you know, and I was already pregnant when I went off the stage to get my words. And so, I mean, a lot of guys were already looking forward to meeting me, <laughs> you know, so I was like, they're like, hmm? What a bummer, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and because a lot of people had not seen me, you know, they had not seen me in the movie. Yeah. So this was like the first time they were going to probably be seeing me physically and I was, <laughs> I was pregnant. Well, you, you became uh, you became known. One of your pet names today is Almost Sexy. Almost Sexy. Where did that come from? Where my husband gave me that name. Really? Yeah. And how did it become public? <laughs> so my husband, <laughs> my husband got me a car at the time and put the name on, on my plate number. I see, okay, so, so that's quite public. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. very public. <laughs> <laughs> and so, it's stuck. It's stuck, everybody just prefers to call me homosexy. Presidents call me homosexy. Really? Pastors call me homosexy. Should I be calling you homosexy? Everybody calls me homosexy. Okay. <laughs> Some people don't even remember my name. Okay. They go, hi, homosexy. I'm like, yeah, it's still a motor. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, and we met, I, we should tell that story, right? Yes. We, we met in London. Yes, we did. At an Oscars event. At an Oscar event, yeah, that's where we met. So, I'm a member of um, AMPAS. AMPAS is the Association for Movie Practitioners, you know, that's the Academy. So, I'm both a member of the Academy and I'm a voting member of, of the Oscars. And so, I was in London. Uh, attending one of the events, that's uh, th that event was to welcome new members. That's I think. it. Yeah, that was what it was, yeah. and that's how we met. It was. Yeah. <laughs> I was do you just... remember Daniel? Yes, I do. Yeah, he's coming yeah. tomorrow. Oh, cool! He doesn't even know you're in town yet. Really? Yeah, I'm trying to surprise no, I, him. No, I think he does. Oh, I think, yes? Yeah, yeah, we because oh. yeah. Oh dear lord. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, no. Anyway, yeah, no, I, I was walking around. It's a very crowded room. I knew mm -hmm. the person who had invited me, but not many others. Right. And you had a warmth and a smile, and I thought you sound like a. You look like an interesting. person. We talked, yeah. to, we talked for ages and we did. Uh, yeah we, we found we had quite a lot in mm -hmm. uh, in common uh, and that's one of the reasons I'm here today. One of the reasons why he's here. Here I am <laughs> in Nigeria, fantastic country. So uh, 300 movies, uh, un unbelievable uh, track record there. Uh, which is which has been the highlight for you? Which movie, if if you were to select one of them? Now Moses is in the um, room, right? So he's going to be listening carefully to the. <laughs> <parts of them. laughs> um, let me see. For different reasons, different movies. Yeah. You know, I mean, one of the earliest ones was Mortal Inheritance. You know, that was that was a pivotal time in my career and my life. Um, I won those awards, and you know, of course, it moved me to the next level yeah. and stuff like that. So that's um, another one would be one of the ones you called, which I, I smile when you called it because a lot of people don't really remember that movie, but it was a very special one for me. 
it's called my story yep so i acted as both a young girl i think i was like what 18 or 19 at, at some point in that movie and in the same movie i acted as a 70 something year old woman really and no one thought i could pull it off you know and i did wow. <laughs> very convincingly even i was shocked wow <laughs> yeah and one of the actors in this country who's very tall chidi Bokeme, that's his name acted as my son in that movie and everyone was shocked really yes that was a very good one for me as an actor <laughs> Oh his name's Chidi? Chidi, that's his name. Chidi. Shout out to Chidi. <laughs> He's another fantastic actor. Um, yeah, so that's another one. Um, then again, another one would be EJ. EJ was a movie we shot in Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, it was a game changer uh, for Nollywood because I think it was the first time two of the biggest uh, actresses in uh, yeah. Nigeria were doing a movie in Los Angeles. You right. know. Um, it was another good blockbuster at the time, um, you know, so we did some things on some different level, if you know what I mean, so it was a good career change, or should I say, eye-opening career change for us. Um, it was a cinema, it was a cinematic movie, and at that time we weren't really doing many cinematic movies. Was it the first? No, it wasn't the first. But you know, it wasn't really common at the time. Cinematic as in made for the movie like, theatres. Yeah, made for, the yeah, yeah. made for the theatres and stuff. Um, so that was another one. And then I did a movie in America. I did a movie uh, for um, VH1. Okay, you didn't yeah, see that because yeah. <laughs> you didn't mention it. Um, so it's a, it's a TV, it's TV series. It's called um, Hit the Floor. Yep. It's still on. Really? Yeah, it's still, it's still on. Hit the Floor. So I was in season nine. Wow. I acted as a motola. I acted with Akon. <laughs> it was myself and Akon and we came in. It was season five, I think. Right. Um, so that was a good experience as well. Um, that was another one. Yeah, and then Alter Ego. Alter Ego was my comeback movie after a while. There you go, I Moses. Took... She said Alter Ego. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, um, it's a movie very dear to my heart. I mean, I stayed away from the industry for like three years prior to Alter Ego yeah. because I was building my business self yeah. and I was doing a lot of speaking engagements around right. the world. And so this young man came to me and said, I have a movie for you. I'm like, no, I don't have time. He was like, I know you will like this one. And then he sent me the script and I was hooked. Oh, really? <laughs> and a lot of people actually think Alter, Alter Ego belongs to me. Yeah. They think I'm the producer, but I'm not. Okay. Yeah, because of how invested I was in the story. Right. Yeah. Right. And that was my director. And Thank you, Moses. Yeah. Shout out to Moses. <laughs> he's, he's waving to he's the waving. crowd just off, 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 screen, uh, off screen here. Yeah. Oh, we should keep in mind, some people will be listening to this as a podcast, so you need to use your voice as well. Oh, okay. not, not your phone's voice, by the way. You can switch that to silence. Okay. Hello, people. There you go. There you go. Um, and then, um, actually, before we, before we go to your music, is there a difference uh, between filming here in Nigeria and filming in LA? Is there a different technique? Did you notice, you know? A lot of difference. And please forgive my voice, I have a nasty cold, so I, I sound very husky. Well, um, you, you, sound, uh, you sound sexy, if I may. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and actually, I missed that fact. <laughs> CNN Travel in 2012 noted your accent as one of the top 12 sexiest accents in the world. Interesting. There you go. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Any, <laughs> which woo? <room? laughs> so, um, where was I? That got me blushing. <laughs> LA versus. Uh, LA versus um, Nigeria. I mean, so many differences. One was, as so I'll talk about the negatives and I'll talk about the positives. One of the negatives I noticed was, as Nigerians, we just go. We work, 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 and we work. We just want to get it done. Um, we were frustrated because myself and um, Genevieve, she was the other actor, were the only Nigerian um, actresses on that set. Everybody else was American. Right. And we were frustrated because we were ready to shoot and then they'll be like, oh, you know, we need to take a cigarette break. <laughs> we need to take tea breaks. And we're like, oh God, <laughs> one of those breaks again. <laughs> so it took a lot longer? I mean, it took a lot longer. So now we understand why sometimes it takes like what? Right, right. <laughs> a year for them to finish a project. And we were, we were just frustrated and because it, it was almost getting to Christmas time. We wanted to leave, we wanted to just work and leave. But, you know, they were just taking their time and all of that, like, whoa, this is going to take forever. <laughs> so yeah, um, the time it takes. Um, let me see, what else? Um, just for the negatives now. Um, and just because people are just so uh, laid back and they take, yeah. you know, it's, it's just pretty much the time. Um, but the positives all. Should I say the things we learn, so, you know, the techniques? Yeah, techniques are a little bit different because with us, you know, um, we're not so detailed. 
So the, the beauty and all the things we saw were how detailed people were, how you know they pay attention to little things like markings and right. stuff like that, um, the distance between the camera and yourself, lighting, you know, everything. Um, so just a technique, especially right. at the time, because that right. was, um, Alter Ego was, I'm uh, sorry, um, EJ was what year? 2009, was it? Right. Yeah, also, so I mean, then in Hollywood, we weren't this far out, you know, yeah. so. Um, so yeah, it was it was it was some kind of ooh okay, <laughs> that's cool yeah. And we should say that uh, you know you use the word Nollywood. For those who don't know, Nollywood is the name for the Nigerian film industry. Yeah. Fun fact: it's the second biggest film industry in the world behind Bollywood and ahead of Hollywood. So those of us who who interested, yeah, <laughs> it the, is <laughs> the West. Uh, you know, find that find that very interesting. Yeah. Um, huge industry. And it what, is. what's the average filming time? If you're working on a movie here, is there an average filming time? And how does that compare? Average filming time, I think, is two weeks. <laughs> two weeks. Is won't you yeah. say that? Wow. It's two I weeks. Two average. Weeks. I mean, I mean, there are movies yeah, that have gone big way. Over a month. Uh huh. A month, two months. Some people have done even so three months. Between two weeks and yes. two months, three months. And how, how about if you were doing one in the US? How how long would that take? So I think averagely six months. Six months. No, but actually, for movies worldwide, it basically depends on the script, the amount of work you have done. Right. That, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, needs. You but know, mm. so um, the four book, you know that film, four yeah. book was shot in ten days. Ten days. You know, and a bunch of other films that are dialogue based, no action, no visual effects. They do it really fast. Yeah. You know? You know, 10 days, 2 weeks and all that. Oh really? For the Avengers and the... The big... Avengers and the world of CGI and sets and everything, yeah. it almost take months to film. Months and months. So, yeah, so. Interesting, I guess uh, like everything, every project is different. Is Let's different? talk about your <coughs> music. Yeah. So that uh, that launched in two thousand and five. You've done uh, you've done some uh, songs and albums. Yeah, so I have two albums yeah. now. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting to know that my second album was actually is this the whole album? Yeah, signed by Bungalow Universal. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, in the US. So. Congratulations! Oh, and where did that come from? Was that uh, was that your idea? Was it Ugo's idea? <laughs> it was my idea. Um, I've always wanted to. She already to made the deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she made the deal. Right before she did, started the album, I think. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I'm a deal maker. <laughs> I'm a yeah, deal maker. I get it. Um, anywho, um, actually, I always thought I was going to be a singer. If I was going to be in the entertainment industry, I never thought I was going to be an actor. Right. I always thought I was going to be a singer. Yeah. You know, but as fate will have it, it was my acting career that actually made me famous or popular. Yeah. So I, when I had a little break, there was a time in Hollywood they, they banned us. We were banned. Why? As actors, well, they said we were getting too big for <laughs> by, for ourselves. Who's they? Who who is they? <laughs> okay, so the history of Nollywood is that the people who have funded Nollywood at some point are actually called marketers, and these guys are like traders. You know, they're traders. There were people who were selling cassettes oh, back. Funny electronics and cassettes back in the day and so they they figured oh you know if i'm selling a cassette empty. um empty i can put some content on it and sell it for more right and so that's how they came into the movie industry to, to fund the industry right. so these guys really don't care about your craft per se you know they just care about the business yeah. and so when they came we were happy like oh wow finally we have some kind of funding right but then the difference is when we now started to understand the business, we're like, okay, so this has to change. This has to change. I'm not going to do this. You need to bring in the standards. And they're like, whoa, <laughs> we're not about that. You know? And so they banned a few of us that they thought were problematic, right. so to speak. <laughs> Obviously, you moved beyond that. Right? I probably was number one <laughs> at the time because I'm an activist. What do you expect? You know? But then, you know, I mean, after a while, you know, they understood what we're, it was, the industry was young, you know, they, they, they understood what we're trying to do and they let it, they let it go and it went back to business. Back to business and, mm -hmm. and, uh, So that was what I did by music, actually. That's what, I had the time. So I was like. That was your passion. And, yeah. All oh, right. So in the break. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. What's your, do you remember any of your uh, lines from your movies? Any of them? Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, I was going to ask you what your favorite line is, but if you can't, there's probably so <laughs> many. Too many movies, gosh. Uh, oh my God, Craig, really? No? <laughs> I've done way too many movies. Way too many. Uh, let me see. From maybe see from EJ, I was like, I remember saying, um, was it me who even said that? 
um, uh, something about um, Hollywood has no, uh, no uh, America has America has nothing for me kills me it's very real something like that <laughs> America has nothing for me <laughs> nothing for us nothing for me it's uh-huh. it dry it's drying me it's killing me something like that I don't know my my character in that movie was like um, I married a billionaire an American billionaire and um, he was pimping me. You know this black, beautiful woman. So he was pimping me, and he was my husband, and right. so I killed him. <laughs> that was the story. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> so you don't need to watch it now. <laughs> so I killed him, and because I was arrested and you know taken to prison and stuff like that, and then my sister came from Nigeria um, to fight for me and to find me good okay. lawyers and stuff like that, and right. she was trying to prove that I, I was a, I was a victim of domestic violence. Okay. And stuff. That was the story. So. America has nothing for me. <laughs> no, he does. He has something for me. <laughs> it does now. It does now. It certainly does. Uh, goodness me. And look, you've, you've done so much in uh, philanthropy. Yeah. Uh, any of them uh, that you'd like to talk about here? Any of them that uh, you feel really passionate about now? Everything I've done, I felt very passionate about. I mean, the first work I did in philanthropy was for Save the Children UK. And um, I, did, I, did, I remember very vividly, I did a campaign called Rewrite the Future. Um, with Katie Mullen and all this, you know, it was amazing. You know, I was very excited because it was my first philanthropy work. Um, after that, I got drafted by the UN. So I've been working with the UN since 2005 or so um, with the World Food Program. And I've gone to missions in Sierra Leone, in Liberia, in too many countries, you know. Um, then after that, I started to work with, uh, I started working with Amnesty International, which is, extremely close to my heart because I'm I tell people I'm more I'm more an activist than a humanitarian. You know. Um, and the, the difference is I I my brain the way my brain works, I fight for things more than I I feel for it. Does that make right. sense? You yeah. know uh, so when I see a situation the first thing that comes to my mind is oh this person's rights instead of oh my God, let me help you and give you money or whatever. That comes later. But the first thing is oh my God, why would you you even be in a situation. Right. Why is the government not doing this for you? Why is it not? That's how my brain works. Right. So I'm more of an activist, you know. And so when I started to work with Amnesty International, it was a perfect fit. Yeah. Um, I eventually found my voice. I found the exact thing I wanted to do, and I did so many things with them. I fought. I fought Shell because <laughs> of the degradation in the Niger Delta with the right. oil spills and everything. We won. <laughs> that was a very good one for me. Um, um, I did that. Um, I also worked with them in Sierra Leone, if I remember correctly. Um, we did something about the maternal mortality rate in Sierra Leone. And we got the government there to give all the women um, free free healthcare. Wow. Yeah, so I also did a lot of work in, uh, in Africa and I was right there by their side, you know, helping them along. And then I worked with um, One.org. I helped do the poverty sexist uh, campaign in Africa. We, we, started that or we launched that in South Africa and I um, got Bono to come to Nigeria. <laughs> you got Bono to come to yeah. Nigeria? Yeah, right? Bono came to Nigeria. you find pictures of he and I on, on, on the internet everywhere. Um, and I think it's come twice now since then, yeah. <laughs> you know. Do you see him when he comes? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're good friends. My birthday was last year and he sent me gifts. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, he's an amazing guy. Did you sing together? No, unfortunately we didn't. Oh. We didn't have enough time for that, but you know. Yeah. If you're watching, Bona. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, and then I have my NGO. My NGO is the Motor Light Youth Empowerment Program. Right. Yeah, and I work with youths and young people. Um, I have two, actually. I have that and I have Give and Let Give. So, a Motor Light Youth Empowerment Program is activism. Yeah. That's the real me. Well. Um, but um, the other one, which is um, give and let give, is humanitarian. So right. that's more like giving. Right. But I, but because I don't want people to feel demeaned when they have to get things, I have to fashion in such a way that I make them give as well. Right. So that's why it's called give and let give. So in other words, um, we always say there's something in your hand that someone needs. So don't always feel like I have to be the one receiving. Give something. Give your service. Give your um, give something in return. What a know? great thought. <laughs> well, activism with humanitarian outcomes is, uh, is just so important. Uh, what, is. what incredible, incredible work that you're doing. Uh, incredible. <laughs> which takes us on to uh, TEFES, which is the current project. Mm-hmm. Tell us about that. So TEFES is my amazing way of giving back to my own industry. Um, 
normally everybody understands you know the things that we've had to do as artists to get to where we are uh, especially if you are in africa um, and stuff it's been extremely difficult you know i mean we started this industry from nothing and for it to be the second largest movie industry in the world it's been amazing it's been extremely um, amazing it's been a lot of hard work um, to be precise um, but we still don't have the structure and that's because the, the way we started we were surviving yeah most of us are not trained most of the the government didn't really come to help us you know so we've grown this industry from nothing to where we are today and now we are here and so it's time to actually go back and build the structures that we didn't have from the beginning and when you say structure what do you mean what are some examples of that? so say for example we don't have i'm going to be 25 years in the industry um, by next year and i have never received royalties or residuals in my work you know to start with um most of us it's very shameful but we don't have very good structures like um insurance like pension plans like you know even as a movie industry for example taxation it will be very difficult for a hollywood project to come work here to come to a movie here because there's no, no tax rebates no Moses, you want to come in and jump in here? Mm-hmm. You know, because this he's a producer, I'm not. He's the producer, cool. so... This is great, come on, come yeah. on over. Yeah, talk about, talk about what it's about. about what, structures, like yes. one of the problem, yeah. problems that you face as producers. You have, you have to balance it by sitting on the <laughs> <hand together. laughs> yeah, I'll try. L- looking, looking yes. at it, yeah. Yeah, so what were we talking about? Our the first and the structures. And the structures that we need yeah. to build in the industry and stuff like that. It's basically structure, the structure that the uh, typical industry is well-run industry should have like the hollywood and the uh, bollywood um, yeah no bollywood a lot film of, villages you know yeah. stuff yeah. like that or studios. stages studios um film villages facilities for film equipment we think we, we don't really have the kind of equipment that we should have as as um as um we've come of age as an industry for, 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 for an industry that's like yeah. a lot of, a lot of, the world. yeah a lot of the <clears throat> big big projects um, and the big studios in Hollywood sometimes want to come here, but when they do their groundwork, when they send people ahead to come and do like a recce before the main production comes, they go back and say we can film there because right. yes, because yes, we, we don't have in place, yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't have the um, equipment. And when we don't even have, or even the, sometimes the enabling environment, yeah, you know, when it comes to taxation and yes. stuff like that, we don't, we don't, we're not film friendly. You mm. know, it takes right. a lot to make a film here. So it's it is. everything. If you see a film out of Nigeria and, it, and you think it's, and good, you don't understand what we've been through, it's issue. very yes. difficult. Yeah. And so this is why TFS was formed. So yeah. what we see in TFS is we are promoting the possibilities in um, the business of entertainment. So. TFS is actually about the business of entertainment. We're mm-hmm. not necessarily about the show. Right. We're about the business. Yeah. And so that's what TFS is here to do. We're, we're here to try to begin to focus on the business. Yeah. So we're engaging government, we're engaging the international community, we're engaging yes. ourselves as practitioners and say, look, entertainment is big business. Yeah. It is big business. And what are the things that are, are stumbling blocks? How do we get them out of the way? We have to yeah. change the narrative. We have to change the narrative. Yeah. And we've come of age, it's time. We want to start to collaborate with international uh, bodies and all of that. What do we need to do to make it right? right. Now we have Netflix, we have um, Google and YouTube, we have Amazon, uh, Amazon we have uh, Warner, Warner, Warner Bros. Warner Bros. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, all the other companies are now looking in. So how do we do business with uh, relativity mm. with these guys, Wonder, um, Wonder Studios, you know, and all these people? And so we don't want them to come and run away. Right. <laughs> we want to get it right, and we want to want to do it properly. Right. And so that's what TFS as a platform um, is now being formed for to right. make sure that we are a platform that can make sh- uh, that can make these discussions and these possibilities happen. Well, it's Wednesday today. The festival is on Friday. Uh, this this video will probably go out, and uh, podcast will probably go yeah. out after it. <laughs> after so, it, yep. yes. By then, you'll you'll see the news. Um, mm-hmm. What a wonderful uh, thing to do. In closing, uh, twenty five years almost mm-hmm. in the industry. Yeah. There are probably people watching this and listening to it on uh, as a podcast who mm-hmm. are thinking about getting into the entertainment industry. industry. Mm-hmm. What would be your advice? Depending on where you are. If you're trying to get, (laughs) (laughs) he doesn't like to be in front of the camera, he likes to be behind the camera. (laughs) If you're trying to get into the industry and you're in Africa, I mean, (laughs) it sounds very, I don't know, but it's the truth. 
the best place to go to is Nollywood, period. There's no other, I mean, it's just like you're in, you're in, you know, and you want to get, I mean, go to Hollywood, you know, it's, it's a no-brainer. Well, yeah, super, this time you go to New York. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so for you to do anything in Africa that has to do with entertainment, either music or movies, you know, you have to be in Nollywood, you have to come to Nigeria, you have to come to Lagos, you have to come to the industry. It is the ultimate in Africa. This is where all the business and all the hype and all the attention is, and this is where it gets done. Um, so um, find your way here, find the, you know, the right platforms to get on um, and find, um, find a way, <laughs> just find a way to be here, that's it. Um, but if you are outside, you know, Africa, and you want to get into the entertainment industry. My advice is do your research, um, find the most um, find the most reliable and the most um, uh, trustworthy platforms. Um, make, you know, do your research. I'm sure if you ask around, people can tell you, oh yeah, these people are trustworthy, these ones. Oh, you can even find it on the internet, but don't rely just on the internet, you know, try and find out as well. Um, and then that would be your intro. Right. Should I say? Yeah. But then again, it's not so difficult, and it's not. It's not. Please, <laughs> may I say this? It's not as bad as people try. I know Nigeria has a nasty um, reputation, but what do you think? It's fantastic. There's it's, lots of energy. It's, <laughs> it's bustling. It's different. It's, it's, yeah. There's a lot of business happening here. It's beautiful. I mean, like any other developing country, you know, we have our challenges and everything. Mm -hmm. But they are amazing people. Nigerians are the most successful black people in the world. Period. And there's a reason for that is because people are very intelligent mm -hmm. and so when you don't have the right channel sometimes of course you will go the bad way so we have a lot of people who have channeled their intelligence and whatever the wrong way but it doesn't remove from the fact that we're very very intelligent people yeah. so just find the right people and do business right. with them um if i must say it myself i'm one of those white people so find you, me <laughs> I, would, I would confirm that um, surround yourself with uh, with great people yeah. and uh, do your homework do your homework and do great work uh, Omatola you've sat here in front of a small smartphone and uh, a little shotgun mic this is probably very different uh, from the big sets that you're used to I, I really it. really appreciate you spending time with uh, with me on Thank this you. channel you're an inspiration you really are uh, to me well there was something you didn't say if i if i can go brag on. a little go on i was and i'm still one of time 100 most influential people in the world absolutely right you missed that yeah i did it's I a did. badge of honor <laughs> most so one of the time time 100 most influential people in the world wow well, it's a real honour and privilege <laughs> for, uh, for you to spend time with me and uh, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you so much. I enjoyed every bit of it. Yes. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs>